Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Elise Anderson. In our show this time, we'll cover the International Microwave Symposium, IMS 2017, at the Hawaii Convention Center. When we say microwave, we're not talking about your oven, we're talking about your cell phone. We'll walk the floor, check out the exhibits, talk to the engineers, and hear about the remarkable new 5G technology. The IMS is an annual meeting for engineering and business professionals involved in microwave theory and application. The IMS is organized by the Microwave Theory and Technique Society of the IEEE. This is the 60th year of the symposium and the second time it was held in Hawaii. IMS 2017 was co-located in Hawaii with two other IEEE conferences, the RFIC, the Radio Frequency Integrated Circuit Symposium, and the ARFTG, the Automatic Radio Frequency Techniques Group, in what is known as Microwave Week, covering synergies among RF, microwave, millimeter wave, and terahertz frequency technologies. The symposium was huge. 8,000 attendees came to Hawaii, many if not most with their families. Estimates are these attendees and families pumped more than $30 million into our economy in the 10 days they were here. And this year's agenda was chock-a-block and included some new events, including a three-minute thesis competition, 3MT, where contestants have three minutes to present their ideas to the public. There was also a 5G summit showcasing next-generation wireless technologies, an RF boot camp on microwave basics, workshops for exhibitors to present the technologies behind their products, and a hackathon to see who are the best RF hackers. The IMS exhibition was also huge and featured 500 exhibitors displaying the state of the art in materials, devices, components and subsystems, as well as in design, simulation, and testing software and equipment. To prepare for IMS 2017, ThinkTech had two talk shows with its organizers in the week before the conference. The first was with Monty Watanabe, Chair of Marketing, and Lee Wood, Exhibit Manager. What kind of exhibits are they? Can you describe some of them? What do they look like? Well, so you have everything from uh, 10 by 10 uh, companies with uh, every kind of uh, component to build a microwave system you can imagine on up to large uh, thousand square foot booths from test and measurement companies. This conference is largely about 5G then, isn't it? That's what we're focusing on this year is one of our themes, yes. Good decision. Yes. <laughs> Everybody wants to know about 5G. Yes. Can you take a moment and tell us what 5G is? I do not have 5G in my, in my no. Samsung. Yeah, no, nobody does. Yeah, does. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they will soon. Thanks for mentioning that. <laughs> yes, so 5G is actually the fifth, gen fifth generation mobile um, cellular phone technology. Um, it's a standard that is evolving as we speak. Um, it's set to be released in the 2020 time frame, uh, but at this point in time, we're really looking at the core technologies, the protocols, the actual uh, microwave devices that allow us to get these um, signals across. So we're really at the forefront as far as, you know. Sounds devices. like it. Mm -hmm. But does 5G exist now, or is it still sort of an aspirational? It's aspirational at this, in this, at this point because, you know, there's no standard. The second talk show was with Kevin Miyashiro co-chair of the conference and who has been one of its organizers over the past 10 years. We first hosted this show, the International Microwave Symposium, here in Honolulu for the first time it ever left the continental U.S. here in 2007. Ah. So uh, I was 10 years younger, a little bit less wise and a little bit more open-minded about things. And so we had such a good time, we said, hey, why don't we do this again? So uh, we put in a bid in so 2008. You're the show then. Uh, you know, Wayne Sherman deserves really the lion's share of the credit. I mean, he's the one that made the first move to bring it here in 2007. Um, the joke that we always have is Wayne was 30 in 1998 when we, uh, when we first bid it. When the show came, uh, he was 40 uh, in 2007. I was 30. And so it was sort of my turn to kind of come help do things. So I served as the pitch man to convince the uh, deciding committee to bring it here. Um, Wayne really is the brains behind the operation, so he helps make everything happen. Uh, I am now in my 40s, so to speak. And so now, you know, it's our turn to kind of pass the baton to the next generation to find the next uh, young, unsuspecting person <laughs> in their 30s to <laughs> go bring it back on, again. Yeah, yeah. And then every 10 years, it'd be beautiful to have this cycle repeat over and over and over again. ThinkTech's Jay Fidel was a judge in the three-minute competition on the Monday afternoon schedule for the show. The elevator pitch, to get your idea across in a short time. You've got Pecha Kucha, you've got Ignite, and here we have the three-minute thesis. But I think that this is a very important 
exercise for anyone in science because at this point it's not a matter of just doing good science. You need to tell your story. So that's what we're about to see. <laughs> Doing good work and doing good science isn't enough, and if you want to shape public policy and change the world, you have to be able to tell that story. So please keep doing that. On Tuesday, we went down to the show when it opened, and we walked the floor and talked with some of the engineers, executives, and attendees there. You know, this is the biggest conference that uh, uh, the state of Hawaii has this year. Uh, this is the second time in the 60-year history that the International Microwave Symposium has gone off of the North American continent. So we're really proud to have it come to Hawaii. Hawaii, after all, is um, a hotbed for wireless research. In 1941, the Opana radar station on the North Shore was the first demonstration of radar uh, and that was used, of course, to detect the enemy airplanes as they were en route to Pearl Harbor. And then in 1971, Norm Abramson and his cohorts uh, developed the Aloha system, which is the first packet radio wireless network. And here we are, 30 years later, uh, talking about the latest advances in wireless research. Think about where we were 40 years ago when we didn't have the internet. You had to use a dial-up phone to call your, your mom in Kansas and um, things with the internet. Now you can have instant chatting. Uh, grandparents can be talking with their grandkids halfway around the world. Uh, so we can do this faster, better, cheaper, and in things, in ways that we can't even imagine uh, 20 years from now when everything becomes a reality. As another example, driverless cars. Everyone is excited about that. Lower fatality rates, uh, more efficient highways, and uh, microwaves will help make that become a reality. Science is global and research knows no boundaries. So scientists need to collaborate. And that's why Hawaii is the perfect venue for international scientific gatherings. And so we leverage our relationships with the faculty at the university who are globally renowned to attract these technical conferences. This conference is all around the College of Engineering, but we also have um, great contributors from SOAS and JAPSON and CTAR, um, the College of Social Sciences, the College of Education, so throughout the UH campus, they're all contributing to the LLA program. I am the vice chair of operations, so I deal with all the operations and uh, the local arrangements for this conference. I was an electrical engineering student under Wayne um, when I was uh, doing my graduate studies at the university. It's playing out great. Um, there's, there's just so much stuff going on um, on the, the meeting room floor, on the, the show floor, in uh, the net networking events. Um, it's, it's exciting just seeing everything that's going on at the conference in general. I think a lot of them are just very excited to be in Hawaii and being able to interact and, and network with, with everyone else from around the world. It's just amazing to see all those discussions that are being had in anywhere that it can be had, whether it's the meeting rooms in, in the um, concourse outside or, or any of the events that we have going on through the week. Microwave engineering in, in and of itself is a very broad field. Um, so I, me specifically, I'm doing a paper on Wednesday and it's on, uh, it's on a mil, it's on a sub millimeter wave power generation. Uh, so that's very niche. Um, but I think something that resonates with everyone is, you know, what you have in your cell phone, uh, Wi-Fi, wi et cetera. So that, that is, I think, uh, really the, the market driver, at least. Um, I would consider a lot of the stuff that we do disruptive. Um, 
Uh, I mean, you know, 20 years ago, the concept of, of Wi-Fi, you know, it wasn't ubiquitous. Uh, now it is. And I think it's, you know, thanks to conferences like these that, you know, help drive innovation and, you know, pushing that, that aspect forward. I, I would say at the heart of it, it's, it's really competition. You know, people, uh, human nature is, you know, it's one that's competitive. People like to one-up one another. Um, I think that's a, a big driver in, uh, you know, kind of pushing things forward. Um, and then I think there are, tr there are individuals that truly want uh, to see, you know, the future happen now. Uh, so that, that, that is definitely a driver as well. I am uh, part of the steering committee, and I am specifically in charge of the student paper competition here at the conference. Ah. Sure, it's in the main forum out here outside of all the technical uh, session meeting rooms. Uh, there were 391 entrants in the student paper competition this year. Uh, of them, the TPRC, the Technical Program Review Committee, selected about 60 to be considered for finalist status. And of those, we picked 24. So this is the cream of the crop uh, for what student research and then not just the country, but the globe right now. Uh, so from 1030 to noon on Wednesday, you'll be able to walk up and see some really amazing research that they're doing, interact with them, talk with them. Uh, they'll be judged by a panel of experts and then we will award uh, the winners tomorrow at the student award lunch. It is a really wide range of subjects and we, and we try to make sure that we're covering all of the different technical areas of uh, competency here at IMS. So we've got some that are chip to chip communication with summer field waves. I know we've got a lot of Internet of Things entries, uh, power amplifiers, very high efficiency, wearable electronics that are woven right into clothing. Uh, it's really a very wide range of really interesting subjects. So actually I'm part of the M MTT uh, community and I have the pleasure to do it. This is my first year to work on the microwave uh, stuff. I'm doing my PhD in the University of Hyatt Manoa and luckily my advisor is Professor Wayne Sharoma. <laughs> so uh, I'm here participating uh, um, uh, in the IMS working on the genealogy project tracking the scholars uh, route, scientific route back to the legends. So for, for example, so Professor Wayne Sharoma when uh, when his uh, genealogy, academic genealogy is traced, could be traced back to Thomas Edison and another uh, scholars that can be traced to Newton or Galileo. And I'm not working alone, I'm working with an amazing guy, Holly uh, Navarro, who's had tremendous effort in this work and he, because he did it for his advisor and we are trying to replicate his model, what he did for his advisor. And he went back to Newton actually when he did it for advi his advisor. My name is Julio Navarro. Um, and we have Kareem here, and uh, the main thing that we try to put together is a way to um, to highlight the um, the rich legacy that we have with all our previous professors. So it's basically started this uh, maybe six months ago uh, for my advisor Kai Chang, and uh, you know he has like 37 uh, PhD students. Some of them are here. Uh, I'm like number nine. We came out of Texas A&M University. My advisor Kai Chang is retiring this year, so we wanted to do something special for him. So I, so I researched his background. Um, he graduated from University of Michigan in 1976 under a professor Peter J. Kahn, University of Sydney. So with that, we kind of uh, try to follow to his advisor, Aitchison, and then Bailey. Townsend, Thompson, all the way back to Galileo and Tartaglia. I, I gave him a poster, you know, so that he could, he could have this. And, and our students, we presented it to him. And, you know, so I put down uh, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700, it's all the way down. So, so it's something that he will take on his retirement. But it's also a good idea because we discussed this with, uh, with Wayne. And he also wants to highlight, so the second one we did... Here's Wayne, and he's a student of Zoya, okay? And then we also have Gabrielle, who's all over the place, and we have Compton, his students, and there's, I'm sure there's more, but that's, that's all we put together, at least for this, because it's a start. Welcome to Corvo's booth at IMS 2017 in Hawaii. Corvo is uh, one of the leading RF solutions provider in the world. We provide solutions from everything from mobile handsets to infrastructure and defense applications. So today we're featuring our solutions for uh, Wi-Fi, IoT, for wireless infrastructure, for defense, as well as uh, for uh, solid state technology.
Corvo is a leader in gallium nitride on silicon carbide technology, and we use that technology from everything from defense systems to the solutions for wireless infrastructure base stations for 5G, as well as for EW comms and other defense solutions. We are developing uh, solutions for 5G. We work with our customers to develop uh, a lot of the infrastructure. We've been involved in over 20 field trials for 5G. So we're developing solutions from everything for 28 gigahertz uh, to 39 gigahertz frequency bands for 5G. We are a foundry company and uh, we have been in RF for a long time and um, effectively this is a global foundry's booth here and uh, we are uh, showcasing our latest and greatest technologies. 5G is happening right now as we speak. Pathfinding is going on right now. The specs are going to be solidified in the next couple of years, but the, the initial effort is ongoing, and that's what you saw in the plenary as well on IMS. And that's, I think time is going to say, because there's a lot of speculation on exactly how the rollout is going to happen. So uh, we are very excited about uh, the rollout, and we look forward to seeing how it's going to ha all happen. Really, the, what we bring to the table is the synchronization of high-speed, pulsed measurements with changing the state of the dots in the TR module, so the, synchronizing the digital control words with the module running at full speed of what the radar would run at. Uh, the application is in the TR module test manufacturing. Uh, all the modules as they're built, they have to go through the manufacturing test process to prove that the modules are changing phase state, changing attenuation state. Um, there are, or there can be, you know, upwards of, of hundreds of states per module, per frequency, and that tends to take the test time and really expands it out. So if you're not doing it at full speed, these tests could be 10, 15 minutes per module. The test platform is really a combination of rack and stack instrumentation from Keysight, uh, National Instruments and other vendors. We write software that goes around that. So the computer science part of it, being able to handle large amounts of data, stream that data, get it where it needs to go, and have quick and easy access to it is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Aerospace defense companies send their engineers. Uh, here in Hawaii, it's a little bit less attractive of a proposition for us. We'll, we'll do much better in Philadelphia or in Boston the next coming years. Hi, my name is Sarah Yost, and I'm a product manager with National Instruments. I'm showing here today a demonstration using our millimeter wave software-defined radio we're running the new radio specification that's been proposed for 5G in an over-the-air communications link. So this is all running at 28 gigahertz over the air. So if you look at our system, we have our base station emulator, Enode B, here on the left-hand side, and we have our cell phone emulator here on the right-hand side. And if I stick my hand in the middle between the transmission, you can see that my signal goes away and my video streaming ends. And this is showing some of the new technology that's being talked about for 5G. Uh, new radio is to 5G as LTE is to 4G. So that when I say that, this is just the new spec that's being proposed. And we can show that we get about 10 times more data throughput with this new radio specification as we do for 5G. So if we look at our link throughput, we're getting about 2.8 gigabits, gigabits per second worth of data. And I am streaming this 4K video here, but if you look at the 4K throughput, we're only using about 10 megabits per second. So we're using a very, very small amount of our total data throughput. So that just shows some of the power and potential that 5G has to offer. Hi, I'm Shivansh, an engineer at National Instruments. We're here at IMS 2017, where we've just introduced the baseband vector signal transceiver. This is the world's first baseband vector signal transceiver with one gigahertz of complex IQ bandwidth. What we're showing here is how you can perform advanced power amplifier test techniques, such as envelope tracking and digital pre-distortion using PXI vector signal transceiver and LabVIEW. In the hardware setup, I have an RF vector signal transceiver and a PXI baseband vector signal transceiver, which can be tightly synchronized with each other to sub-nanosecond accuracy. Now, the alignment of the RF and baseband signal is a core requirement of envelope tracking test techniques. In addition to that, I also have an RF LTE power amplifier with ET and DPD enabled, and I'm controlling the power amplifier using NIDP digital pattern instrument and source measurement unit. Now, let's take a look at the software. So in the software, I can begin with a delay sweep for envelope tracking. And what I can do is 
I can perform a delay sweep where I'm relatively sweeping the RF and baseband signal with respect to each other to figure out the minimum delay at which I'm getting the best EVM and ACP measurements, which in this case is around 20 nanoseconds. And at that delay, you can see in the scope trace that the RF and the baseband signal is tightly synchronized and aligned with each other. In addition to that, you can also perform digital pre-distortion because of the one gigahertz instantaneous bandwidth on the RF vector signal transceiver. The centerpiece technology of the conference and microwave industry was 5G. 5G will be available in the next two or three years and will make microwave communications and thus data transmission over cell phones and devices ten times faster than they are now. So 5G is definitely worth following. Since these speeds will enable fabulous new functionality we cannot yet even imagine. This functionality will change the way our devices work and that in turn will change the way the world works. Let your imagination fly. The simultaneous editing of documents and video Skype calls of perfect quality and fast enough to enable interactive exchange of data to and from any place in the world. This will change the meaning of global communication and collaboration. All in all, this was a great conference. For the organizers who worked so hard to make it happen, for the participants who came and shared their knowledge, for the business professionals who networked up a storm and made deals, for the convention center and the hotels, for the students who can aspire to a new identity in science and engineering, and for all of us who may now be able to enjoy a new chapter in a more sustainable economy. Yes, we want to bring lots of conferences like this to Hawaii, not only for them to pay the rent at the convention center in their hotels, but to see Hawaii as a hub for science and engineering. It's a natural and a huge opportunity for us. Let's bring more conferences like this to Hawaii to make us famous not only for our hospitality, but for our excellence. Let's seize the day. So that's why IMS 2017 is so important. It's a statement that Hawaii can be, and to some extent already is, a hub for scientific meetings and deals. It's a new source of revenue and a new reputation for the state, one that will bring many new visitors, companies, and investments to our shores. Hawaii, the tech center we have always wanted it to be. Want to know more about IMS 2017? See ims2017.org. Want to know more about the Radio Frequency Integrated Circuit Symposium? See rfic-ieee.org. Or the Automatic Radio Frequency Techniques Group Conference? See arftg.org. Want to know more about microwave transmission and the disruptive new 5G technology that will soon be making its way into cell phones and devices around the world? Just Google 5G and you'll see what we mean. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them, but ThinkTech will take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia, and communities around the islands and the world. ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. The audio is on thinktechhawaii.com slash radio, and we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. See our website for links.
Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or sign up on our email list to get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech, green screen, First Amendment studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to join our live audience or participate in our shows, write to think at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands. We want to stay in touch with you and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. You can call into our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in to 415-871-2474 and pose a question or make a comment. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Hey Elise, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Elise does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii, and of course, technology conferences and consciousness. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Elise Anderson. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>